Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Sativ, and today we will be talking about Assassination Rogues in Arena. All of this information is up to date for Legion Season 1, and all of the footage in this video is played at above 2400 rating. Here's what you can expect to see in this video. Artifact Trait Analysis, Talent and Honor Talents, Maximizing Damage, Opening and Burst Rotation, Playstyle and Closing Thoughts. Let's go ahead and get started by taking a look at our artifact. When it comes to your artifact, progress along the tree until you reach Urge to Kill. From here, move on to Master Assassin. At this point you can choose to either rush Blood of the Assassinated or Bag of Tricks. Personally, I feel the damage from Bag of Tricks is higher than Blood of the Assassinated, but Bag of Tricks has a chance of breaking CC if there is a target near it when the bag procs. After you've reached Blood of the Assassinated and Bag of Tricks, make your way over to From the Shadows. Next, let's quickly talk about Talents and Honor Talents. When it comes to Talents, your selection is very straightforward. Most of the time, you're going to be using Subterfuge, Vigor, Elusiveness, Internal Bleeding, and Exsanguinate. Switching between Master Poisoner and Elaborate Planning depends on what you're doing. Personally, I prefer Elaborate Planning in 2v2, but if I'm playing in a situation where I can depend on my other teammates' damage as well, the healing reduction from Master Poisoner is a superior choice. At the bottom, we have Venom Rush, or Marked for Death. I take Mark for Death in situations where I feel I'm going to need the more upfront burst damage, but Venom Rush is more consistent damage overall over the course of a 2 or 3 minute match, but Mark for Death pulls ahead in short matches that are under 2 minutes. Now let's talk about Honor Talents for a little bit. As I play an Orc, I'm almost always taking Relentless, though if I was another race, I would roll with Gladiator's Medallion. I take Hardiness, Reinforced Armor, or Sparring depending on what I'm facing. Make sure you always take sparring against double melee teams, reinforced armor versus teams that'll spread pressure you, and hardiness versus teams where you're remaining at high health but get swapped to. I feel cut to the chase is the best choice in the third tier, though maneuverability has its uses as well. I'll take maneuverability when I really want to have that freedom up time when I'm trying to chase a healer for example, but cut to the chase passive is better overall. In the fourth tier, I feel Honor Amongst Thieves is the best option, as it is the only one that generates any form of resource. In the fifth tier, I only ever take Deadly Brew, as Deadly Poison is a lot of your damage, and having the Wound Poison effect is something you cannot pass up. Creeping Venom and System Shock are two good choices depending on what kind of comp you're playing. If you're playing something like Rogue Mage, where you're training one target primarily, System Shock is your best choice. But if you're playing Rogue Lock Shaman, for example, where you're spreading your damage all over the place, then Creeping Venom is what you'd want to run. Now that we have our Talents, Honor Talents, and Artifact planned out, let's take a look at how to maximize our damage output. Assassination Rogues fill two roles, Spread Pressure and Single Target. The reason we're so good at Spread Pressure is because we have Wound Poison, which reduces healing by 25% or 30% with Master Poisoner. It's ideal to spread bleeds to multiple targets for energy regen. Doing this will increase our single target damage and make us more threatening during burst windows with Exsanguinate and Vendetta. We're going to break down dealing damage into two sections, sustained damage and burst damage. Our sustained damage comes from spreading garrote, rupture, and poisons to targets. Venomous wounds generates energy when garrote or rupture tick on poison to targets. This will improve our energy regen, reduce healing, and provide great spread pressure. For burst, we cycle through exsanguinate, kingsbane, and vendetta. How and when we choose to use these depend on the comp we're playing. Generally speaking, it's good to use your cooldowns early to force defensive CDs from your enemies. Here are the keys to maximizing your damage output. Maintain bleeds on the kill target, applying bleeds to off targets while keeping a high uptime on the kill target. Always kidney shot the kill target. Cycle through cooldowns, save a CD for every kill attempt. Don't always pair Vendetta with Exsanguinate and Kingspain. Try saving it for your next kidney shot kill attempt. Now let's talk about openers and burst rotation. I don't like to give people set ability combinations that they're supposed to follow because this makes people rigid in their gameplay instead of fluid. What you're trying to do is get your bleeds on multiple targets and then set up for a burst on your kill target. What we're going to do is watch an opener in a few games so you guys can get an idea of how I'm starting off the matches to get my pressure rolling. We start off this game with a cheap shot on the rogue, garrote, mutilate, rupture. Garroting from subterfuge doesn't trigger the cooldown. I then run over to the mage and get 5 combo points and rupture him as well. I get stunned, sit some crowd control, get 5 combo points, and venom, and then I set up for a switch on the priest with vanish garrote, kidney shot, vendetta, mutilate mutilate, rupture, 
Exsanguinate, King's Bane, and I start spamming as much damage as possible into my kill target. He eventually gets overwhelmed. My Warlock makes some smart plays by spam fearing, and we score a kill. Kind of fear, kind of fear. I feared him. I just keep fearing Zildas. Keep fearing. Basically, my opening rotation consists of setting myself up for a switch to the kill target by getting bleeds out on as many targets as possible, but I'm making sure not to put my Garrote on cooldown so that I can use it for a switch later to the kill target, who is generally going to be a healer when I'm playing RLS. We make a switch over to the healer with that Garrote into a kidney. I use Vendetta and he trinkets to try and keep himself up, but at this point I've already got a 5 point rupture, a fresh Garrote, and I'm able to exsanguinate Kingsbane and do as much damage as possible. Stacking your cooldowns like this is sometimes valuable, but in other situations it's best to cycle through them. In some situations, it's better to shut down your opponent's openers as best you can. Here I throttle the two melee DPS by sapping them, I got Berserker Rage from the Warrior by doing so, and then I sap the Shaman full. After that, I put Cheap Shots into the melee, because they're popping their CDs off their mounts basically, and trying to score a kill on us. When I'm playing RLS, I'm mostly depending on my spread pressure with setting up kidney shots on our kill target, but when there's an enemy Rep Paladin, your spread pressure is severely hindered because Rep Paladins have an aura that will cleanse your poisons, making your bleeds not regenerate energy. So an opener is very situational, but mostly consists of setting up bleeds and controlling their momentum, then setting up for a burst with a 5 point rupture on your target, refresh Garrote, into a kidney shot, then Kingsbane, Exsanguinate, and or Vendetta. So we've watched an example about how I open, now let's take a look at an example of me setting up a burst. I have 5 combo points when I switch to the Druid. I refresh Garrote, put up a Rupture, mutilate my energy away, then Vendetta to get a full bar of energy, put a Kidney Shot into my target, and Exsanguinate. I throw up King's Bane shortly thereafter. Let's wrap things up by doing some commentary over some matches, so you guys can get an idea for the playstyle of an Assassination Rogue. So this match against Rogue Mage Paladin, I start off by cheap shotting the Rogue and Garroting the Mage. This shuts down their opening pressure a little bit, and allows my team to get some good positioning and avoid some CC. My Shaman sheared the Polymorph there, I kick the Frostbolt because my teammate is seriously about to die. I vanish, I garrote, I cheap shot the Rogue again, I'm trying everything in my power to make sure that my lock lives here. After we've recovered a little bit, I throw my Vendetta into the Mage to try and get some pressure rolling, but the Holy Paladin has his wings going, so he's basically just offsetting all of the damage that I'm dealing. With this in mind, I refresh Rupture on my Mage, then I refresh Rupture over on the Rogue, fan of knives to apply some poisons, and I put a kidney shot into the paladin. As you can see here, we start generating pretty good pressure now that the paladin is not just standing there spamming healing with wings. I made sure to apply poisons to the mage and the rogue before I went on the pally so that I was generating as much pressure as possible. Right there we got bubble without exsanguinate or vendetta. All I did was make sure that I had good uptime on bleeds so that I had huge energy regen when I was putting damage into that kidney shot. Once the paladin's out of bubble, he gets put into a hex by our shaman. I get a 5 point rupture on him while he's in that hex, I exsanguinate so that I get better energy regen, and I throw a kidney shot at the paladin kill. because I know he's kill. dead. Kill. Kill. So that last clip was a very RLS playstyle, focusing primarily on spread and converging on healers with kidney shot. When I'm playing rogue mage, things are a little bit different. I'm mostly focused on bursting into one target. And the only time I ever really put pleads on the other is if my main kill target is way too far away for me to connect on. So there's two playstyles of an assassination rogue. One is extremely train heavy, where you focus on having high uptime on one target and dealing as much damage as physically possible to them, only switching off when you know there's no way you can connect. And the second style is the spread style, where most of your damage comes from spreading bleeds to multiple targets and relying on that energy regen and short cooldowns to pressure healers, or whoever your kill target happens to be. Well guys, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. For those of you who don't know, I run a live stream on Twitch TV where you can catch me live any day of the week. I do answer questions there and I do my best to help anybody who needs it. Something I would like to mention is we're starting a Patreon for the YouTube channel. The goal in mind is to be able to produce content like this full time for you guys throughout the entire course of Legion and leading into following expansions. So if you're curious what this is all about, take a look at the link displayed above. It's also in the description. There's all sorts of neat rewards for people who do decide to contribute and it helps strengthen the community as a whole. Till next time my friends, I want you all to do me one very important favor. Stay sneaky and have a great day. So, unfair advantage and turn the tables. 
Turn the tables. Turn the tables. Turning the tables. That is how you win. You just turn the tables on your enemy. And that is all you need to do. Fuck, rogue so simple. Just turn the table and win. Yeah, yeah same. Uh, oh! Yo, if we, if we kidding Shaman, I have fragility and I think he just does. Okay, like let's 100%. go. Oh, no. Okay. I should have kidding and died. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I had to paint up everything. Yeah, we were close. 